Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 14 of USMLE Domination High Yield Tutorials. We have a great bread and butter tutorial, but before I begin, please subscribe to this channel. Please support our mission of helping everyone and making this free knowledge go viral uh, and support us, please. Thank you so much. Okay, so getting right here to the tutorial, let's start with this high yield question. So a 47-year-old female presents to the ED with pelvic pain, urinary frequency, and urgency. She is afebrile and her CT scan is shown below. What's the most likely causative organism for her underlying diagnosis? Is it Klebsiella, Proteus, Staph aureus, or E. coli? And it's based on this CT image through the pelvis that we're seeing. And I promise we'll come back to this high yield question at the end after this very short brief tutorial. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk about acute abdomen part two. We talked last week about you know, three diagnoses in, you know, related to the acute abdomen. But these are three additional diagnoses that we think about when we think about acute abdominal pain, and that's acute appendicitis, acute diverticulitis, and acute cystitis. And these are really bread and butter diagnoses that I'm sure everyone knows, but I want to really, you know, lay the foundation for how we think about these on the USMLE and also particularly the imaging findings with respect to these. So this is acute appendicitis. And this, on the left side, we have a CT image through the abdomen and pelvis showing a normal appendix. So this structure here, again, remember that this is the right side of the body. This is the left side of the body. This is anterior and this is posterior. This bright bone here is a sacrum. This is the right iliac bone. This is the left iliac bone. This of course is a psoas muscle. This bowel structure here is the cecum and coming off of the cecum is this blind ending tubular structure with air, which is the normal appendix, right? It's normal because we in fact see air in it. When you see air in the appendix and the wall is very thin like we see here, this is a normal appendix, okay? Um, often an abnormal appendix, you can't always see air within the lumen and the wall, which is very thin, right? It's, you know, this, you know, linear line here, this is the medial wall, this is the lateral wall, very thin. And notice that the fat, this dark area here is the, you know, is the, is the fat around the, uh, the appendix. And notice that it's very, pristine, right? We, the, the fat is very nicely seen here, this dark area. If we move on to this area of, you know, the, uh, so the arrows show the normal appendix here, but if we come here, this abnormal area, this is the abnormal appendix here. Notice that it's fluid filled, right? Any appendix that measures more than six millimeters in diameter, if we were to measure this, this would probably be like eight or nine millimeters, you know, from wall to wall. The wall is somewhat more thick. There's you know, enhancement in the wall. So there's hyperemia or, you know, wall thickening and wall enhancement along this appendix. This wall is very bright compared to the wall that we're seeing here in this normal appendix. We don't see gas in here, you know, it's thickened and there's uh, mucosal enhancement or, you know, enhancement along the wall of the appendix. So this is a nice example of what acute appendicitis will look like. Sometimes you can have a calcified flecolith, right? Um, in the lumen that can result in obstruction. The fat around the appendix, can, there, it can be hazy. We call that fat strain. We don't see that as well in this case, but this is still an example of what acute appendicitis could look like. You know, a blind ending tubular structure with a thickened wall, you know, enhancement of the mucosa, and, you know, the diameter measures more than six millimeters. Those are all findings suggestive of acute appendicitis. And of course, acute appendicitis often presents with fever, uh, right lower quadrant abdominal pain. Oftentimes they can have, you know, peri-umbilical pain, pain along their umbilicus that then migrates to the right lower quadrant. And at McBurney's point, McBurney's point is, you know, this area, one third the distance between the anterior superior iliac spine and the umbilicus, right? So, you know, pretty much right here where the appendix lives. I actually have had acute appendicitis, so it's extremely painful. It literally felt like somebody was stabbing me with a knife. It's that severe. Uh, so, you know, they can, patients can present with like, you know, guarding on physical exam, rebound tenderness, you know, peritoneal signs. And, you know, it's important to make this diagnosis because the treatment for this is appendectomy, right? We, it's a sur it's surgical removal of the appendix to prevent perforation, right? They can get, people can get peritonitis. The appendix can result in perforation, which can be a very uh, sinister problem. Uh, for the body, right? So this is a nice example of what acute appendicitis looks like, right? In adults, it's usually caused by obstruction by a fecalith, as I said. In children, usually lymphoid hyperplasia results in the obstruction and then, you know, increased intraluminal pressure and then inflammation and then, you know, the findings that we see on CT examination. So nice example of what acute appendicitis would look like. Moving on to acute diverticulitis. So I want to highlight again uh, the normal colon. Remember that we said the ascending colon, which is this area right here in the right um, 
hemiadenine and the descending colon, which is right here. These are retroperitoneal structures, right? Notice that you can see, you know, gas within the lumen. This is, you know, an outline by stool, right? So notice that the fat around the colon or the descending colon is nice and pristine. There's no haziness to the fat, this dark area here. There's no wall thickening. You know, the colon itself looks completely normal on this image. However, if we come here, Notice that we have these outpouchings that are outlined by contrast. These are the diverticuli, right? So these are, you know, this is there's colonic diverticulosis here, but even more than that, there's thickening. There's wall thickening. You know, the wall is very thick along the, you know, descending or sigmoid colon here, and the fat around it is very hazy. We call this fat straining. So that's that's a marker for inflammation when this fat is very hazy. See how there's, you know, these streaks of haziness here. Compare that to the fat here, where it's very dark and pristine. Right, so this is a nice example of what acute diverticulitis would look like. When you have diverticuli along the colon, these outpouchings, right? Diverticula are these focal outpouchings along the wall that involve the mucosa and submucosa. They're usually a result of increased intraluminal pressure and a focal weakness in the colonic wall. Oftentimes, patients that are obese or who have diets low in fiber result, you know, develop colonic diverticular disease. It's very common. And then when this gets inflamed, we call that diverticulitis, right? Where you get, you know, wall thickening of the colon and then hazy fat stranding around the colon, right? This typically presents with fever, left lower quadrant abdominal pain. Uh, there can be leukocytosis associated with this as well. And this is not treated surgically, this is usually treated with antibiotics, right? So acute diverticulitis is treated with antibiotics. There can be complications associated with diverticulitis, so you have to make the diagnosis fast, right? So, you know, there can be, you can develop a pericolonic abscess, this can result in perforation and also something called a colovesicular fistula, meaning a fistula between the colon and the bladder, right? So then, you know, you can start to see air in the bladder because it's connected with the colon. And then oftentimes people can have pneumatoria or air in their urine. That can be another sign that there's a colovesicular fistula or a complication with acute diverticulitis. So a nice example of what normal colon will look like, ascending, descending colon, and then a colon, a sigmoid colon with acute diverticulitis with wall thickening and fat stranding or haziness of the fat around it with all these, you know, outpouchings along the colonic wall in this patient with acute diverticulitis. So finally, let's move on to acute cystitis. This is a normal appearance of the bladder, right? This is, you know, within the pelvis, we have a fluid filled structure here, which is urine, right? Notice we're in the pelvis. This is the femoral head. This is the acetabulum. Again, femoral head acetabulum. This is the bladder here. Notice the wall is very thin. We can very pretty much imperceptible, right? We can posteriorly, remember this is anterior, this is posterior. We can see the wall that's very thin, right? Maybe one or two millimeters in thickness. And then all this darker area is the fluid or the urine uh, within the bladder. Contrast that to here with this patient with acute cystitis where we have urine here in the bladder, but the wall is very thick. It's like three to four times the thickness of the wall here, which was normal, right? And notice that the fat around it too, it's a little hazy, right? This dark area, there's haziness to the fat. We call that fast rating. Again, that's a marker for inflammation, just like you saw in that case of acute diverticulitis. So this is a nice example of what acute cystitis would look like, right? Where we have wall thickening of the bladder and hazy fast straining surrounding the bladder. This is typically presents with acute pelvic pain, dysuria, pain with urination, pyuria, white blood cells in the urine, increased frequency of urination, increased urgency of urination. This is typically seen in diabetics. Often females get this uh, because of the shorter urethra that they have compared to males, uh, sexual intercourse, indwelling catheters. These are all risk factors for acute cystitis, okay? And typically acute cystitis is treated with antibiotics, typically Bactrim, right? So Bactrim is the, is the drug of choice for acute cystitis in patients that aren't allergic to uh, Bactrim. So a nice example of a normal bladder and a thickened, inflamed bladder in this patient with acute cystitis. So I think the must know US assembly points here are for acute appendicitis, typically presents with fever, right lower quadrant, abdominal pain, sometimes periumbilical pain initially that then migrates to McBurney's point that, that, that position in the right lower quadrant between the anterior superior iliac spine and the umbilicus. You can have you know, rebound tenderness and guarding on exam. On imaging, you're gonna look for that dilated appendix that measures more than six millimeters. You can have wall thickening surrounding edema as well. Sometimes you can have a calcified flecolith that results in obstruction. Remember that it can perforate, so you want to treat this as soon as possible with surgery, with appendectomy. Acute diverticulitis, fever, left lower quadrant abdominal pain, leukocytosis. You're looking for a colonic wall thickening and then the fast stranding around those diverticula, typically along the sigmoid colon and edema around it. 
and this is typically treated with antibiotics, but there are a lot of complications associated with acute diverticulitis, such as a, a colonic abscess, perforation, where you get you know, gas or free air in the abdomen or pelvis, and then that colovesicular fistula, or that fistulous connection between the colon and the bladder that can result in air in the bladder and pneumatoria or air within the urine. And finally, acute cystitis, which is infection or inflammation of the bladder, typically presents with suprapubic pain, dysuria, urinary frequency, urgency, uh, typically more seen in females rather than males because of the shorter urethra. Bladder wall thickening and surrounding fast training is what we're looking for on CT imaging. And of course, the female sex, sexual intercourse, indwelling catheters are risk factors. Of course, E. coli is the most common causative organism for UTIs and acute cystitis, right? Now, in sexually active females, you can also get infected with staph, Staphylococcus saprophyticus, but E. coli is still more common even in sexually uh, active females, okay? So E. coli is always gonna be the answer on the USMLE for acute, the most common causative organism for acute cystitis. So with that in mind, I just literally gave you the answer to the high yield question. You have a 47 year old female presenting to the ED with pelvic pain, urinary frequency and urgency. So she's presenting with symptoms of cystitis. She's afebrile and that's an important point, right? So a lot of times cystitis can present with patients that don't have fevers, they don't have systemic symptoms, right? And our CT scan is shown below. Notice that there's, you know, bladder wall thickening, you know, perivesicular edema or fat stranding. Nice example of what acute cystitis would look like on, on CT. Of course, we know that, you know, the most likely cause of organism here is E. coli, okay? Always gonna be the right answer. Thank you so much. Hope this was helpful. Please spread this to those who may find this a benefit. We'll do another super high yield USMLE domination tutorial next week. Tune in next week and please, you know, leave comments. If there are any suggestions for topics that you want to hear about, please leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for your attention.